Now, the shortage of personal protective equipment, or PPEs, has been a massive issue the world over. As frontline healthcare workers and citizens do their best to protect themselves against contracting the novel coronavirus. Now, reports of blocked shipments, faulty materials, and insufficient quantities have been a cause for concern for many. But now, Kenyan 3D printing company, Ultra Red Technologies, alongside a group of other players in the industry, have taken matters into their own hands. We have the co-founder, Mehul Shah, on the line for more on this. Now, Mehul, which PPEs are you producing at the moment, and what are the volumes? Hi. Okay, so we are producing mainly face shields at the moment. Um, and uh, at, at the current moment, us and a few other 3D printers around the country are able to produce around 300 of these a day. Um, and I think in time, we'll be able to increase our production even more than that. Um, and this is from basically getting a design to production in less than two days. Uh, how, how, how are you working with uh, what would be seen as your competitors? What brought you to this realization that maybe uh, we are stronger together? So we set up a, a sort of a task force group uh, that uh, it was a call to action from all 3D printers. Uh, and uh, we created an open source platform where we can all share our ideas, our files, uh, our knowledge um, to be able to you know, boost our production and get these PPEs out to the frontline doctors as fast as possible. Uh, what, what's the distribution methodology? Um, so currently what's happening is that a few of us are distributing it directly to some of the hospitals frontline. Uh, the major distribution is going to happen via AMREF, uh, and they're going to be managing most of the COVID response centers in Kenya. Uh, now, of course, these materials are made, uh, you need money to make these materials, so there's a financial aspect to it. Now, who is doing the funding? So at the moment, we are self-funding. Uh, so everything that we're doing at the moment is bringing in uh, you know, our raw materials when we can. Uh, you know, as, as we know, shipping around the world right now is getting, is getting very difficult. So most of our raw material comes from abroad. Uh, we bring it in and, uh, and we pledge to give these to the, to the COVID centers at cost. Now, uh, outside uh, the PPEs, are there any other materials that are coming out of ultra raid technologies that could be used in the fight uh, against coronavirus? Yeah, so we're, we're working uh, alongside with some hospitals to introduce something called a Y splitter on some of the ventilators. Uh, so this will allow some of our uh, high powered ventilators to be used by two patients rather than one. Uh, it's a very delicate procedure, uh, but in case the need arises, if it's an extreme case, then there is a possibility of doing that. We're also working alongside uh, a decathlon to supply doctors with uh, scuba masks as an alternative to the N95 mask, uh, which has a very powerful filter. And uh, this will give the doctors a lot more comfort when, uh, when going in and treating these patients. Now, adaptation of the ventilator from design stage to it being uh, good enough to be used in hospitals. Now, what has the process been like? And have you gotten any form of support uh, from the Kenyan uh, Health Ministry? Yes, yeah, so the ministry has been fast-tracking a lot of the approval processes and that's, has made a lot uh, available in terms of tech research. Uh, and there's quite a few teams working on ventilators. Uh, now, the challenges come with uh, some of the lack of parts that we get uh, locally here. Um, and also, I think some of uh, the skills that are required with these mechanical ventilators are quite complex. So trying to create ventilators in a very short period of time comes with these challenges. But on, on the forefront of it, I think this is a sort of global effort uh, that all countries around the world have been um, sharing their ideas. Uh, we've been tapping into them, we've been giving our own ideas, and that's really helping speed up the whole process behind this. Now, uh, UltraRate, just like many other companies, uh, have, may have been affected. Uh, one will see this as an opportunity for uh, yourselves as well. Now, what have you taken from this crisis? What are the lessons for you? So, I mean, for us, it's been a very big opportunity uh, to really show the world how 3D printing can help um, and how fast we can mobilize and actually create a manufacturing platform. Um, so for us, it's, it's an eye-opener. I think it's also a, a very good lesson for the world. Uh, we've been trying to educate a lot of people on the uses and the, and the help that 3D printing can give. Uh, and this has really you know, put us in the spotlight. Uh, and I want to congratulate you know, all of the 3D printers around the world there's been a monumental effort um, 
you know, you can Google any any country around the world, and you'll see the first responders have always been the three D printers. Thank you 